Hi everyone, this is Mary, you're in Mary Reads, and in today's video I decided to talk about the books that I really want to read, but I don't have them in my plans yet. So my husband and I went to two bookstores uh, last weekend, and I was just browsing, uh, checking out what was there, because I'm trying not to buy any extra books, uh, especially now that I got Kindle. So I was just looking around trying to see if I can find anything that interests me and I found six books that I really really liked. Um, they are very promising and I really want to read them. Um, I don't have them in my plans yet but I'm either gonna try like putting them here and there in my monthly reading plans or I will plan them for next year. We'll see. Uh, hopefully at least some of them I'll be able to read this year. And the first book is called Stories from Tenants Downstairs and this book tells eight different stories about eight different people who are all neighbors in one building. Um, they all have their own issues. Um, I would assume not having enough money, having to pay the bills, then some of them probably have some love issues. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I know there was something about uh, paying the bills and not having enough money. Um, and everything gets worse because of the gentrification. So I first got very interested in the concept when I saw Only Murders in the Building. Um, I really like this idea of enclosed spaces and people living in them and interacting and having some sort of a relationship um, and it's kind of standing alone. You have like the whole city, but this thing is standing alone. It's like its own little country, its own little island. And I think that this is gonna be something similar, but just not about a rich building, but about a regular average uh, New York City apartment building, maybe even uh, for, for slightly poorer people, who knows. Um, and I also was very excited to see this book because I was once going on a uh, an event, I don't even remember what it was, and I get out of the subway and I see this like super old, um, tall uh, apartment building, like this brown stone and, and very, very old. And I just thought, oh my God, okay, so how, I, I wish I could write a book about how these people live. Um, what do they think about every day? Where do they work? The building looked pretty old, so how do they deal with living in an old building? Is everything fine there? Is it renovated inside or is it not? And they have, I don't know, cockroaches or something. Um, it's just such an interesting thing to think about and to discuss. And I was very, very excited about the book. I didn't get it yet because it was super expensive. It was like a 120 page book in a um, soft like cover um, and like a paperback and it was $18. And I realized that I'm not willing to spend $18 for a book that I'm not entirely sure about. I'm just interested in the idea. So I'm thinking I will find this book somewhere online and get it as an ebook. Uh, we'll see. The second book is called No Room at the Morgue. I think this is kind of like a Sherlock Holmes stories. I don't know if it's a separate uh, book or it's uh, the same character comes up in different stories, but it tells a story of a former police officer who was taken uh, off duty, who was fired because he accidentally killed a political demonstrator so he started drinking he tried opening his own office but nobody showed up so he he lost his job that he apparently really liked um he doesn't get any clients he just is a lost person and he again he starts drinking he he's miserable but one day a young lady comes into his um, office and her hands are just bloody she has a lot of blood on her hands and she says that somebody cut her roommate's throat. Um, she can't go to the police because they will obviously suspect her right away and are not even gonna look into the case. So she came to our main character and we're gonna find out if he's gonna take the case or not. Well, I assume he's going to. And the next book is called The Dolphin House and why I got so interested in it. I was in a um, MoMA exhibition 
uh, at a MoMA exhibition and I don't remember what it was called. Um, but it was, it was about uh, climate change. It was about uh, trying to figure out how to live our lives with less impact on the nature, on the environment. And there were a lot of interesting experiments shown um, that people decided to like take in 20th century. And one of them was actually the uh, Dolphin House experiment. And I saw this book and I was like, oh my God, I think I know the idea. I think I've heard of it before. And then I realized that, yeah, that's true, I have. And so I, I got interested in the book. So it tells a story of a young woman who I think she's partly deaf. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it's important to the plot, but every summary of the book says that. So I assume that's gonna be important. So she comes to an island and discovers that there is this crazy uh, scientist, Dr. Bloom, who has four dolphins that he keeps for an experiment. I think he was trying to kind of contact them and try to establish like this uh, connection between dolphins and people because it's believed that dolphins are very smart. They have a big brain, uh, kind of like humans do. So I think, I think the idea was that they were trying to um, get in contact with, but the point is that he was keeping them uh, in like an enclosed environment and animals were obviously suffering. So she decides to save the dolphins. She decides to do whatever she can to save these animals from a cruel professor. Book number four is called No Room at the Little Cornish Inn. And I don't expect much from the book, but I just, I read about it a little bit and it's this Christmas romance story. And I thought that it would be pretty nice to take it uh, right near Christmas when you want to relax, when the year is finishing and you're kind of, uh, trying to like draw a line between this busy year and upcoming holidays. And I thought that it could be a, an interesting and fun read. So it tells a story of a woman who is trying to get her son to spend a family Christmas holiday around the, uh, just around the family, just a very calm and, and uh, nice celebration. But her boss unexpectedly sends her to this little inn that's about to go out of business. And she has to incognito go there and try to figure out what's going on with the inn, uh, why exactly it's about to close and prevent it from closing. And once she gets there, she meets the manager who doesn't like her right away. And I don't think she's very happy about him either. And she has to stay there, figure out what's going on with the inn. And if it turns out that this manager is not a very good worker uh, and his reputation is really as bad as people talk about it, then she will have to fire him. I assume that she's going to have a love story with this manager. I don't know. Um, but I think this can be something very nice, very cozy. I hope it will be. I like ideas about um, stories being uh, written in like an inn or a hotel um, or when you go like on vacation somewhere. I think it's, it's a very interesting setting. I just like the setting in general. It makes me relax right away. Um, so it can be a very fun read, can be stupid, but I'm hoping it will be very fun. Next book is Lessons in Chemistry. I know that there is a TV show, I think, uh, either coming up or already uh, it came out, I don't know. Um, and I've heard about the book a while ago, but I always thought that it's something stupid. I wasn't really interested. And then I read an article about uh, the author and how she got the idea of writing the book. So apparently she was working in an office, I don't know exactly, some, some kind of a firm, and she was doing a presentation to a room full of men. And after she finished, they just didn't say anything, they didn't react at all. And one of the men uh, stood up and was like, okay, now let me explain this to you. And he said exactly the same thing, the um, author, Bonnie something, but let's call her Bonnie. Um, he told the same thing Bonnie just did and she mentioned it and everybody was like, eh, what are you talking about? Don't worry. And so once man listened to this guy's presentation, they were all cheering, applauding, saying how great the idea is. 
and Bonnie just felt that she was extremely, extremely disrespected and it's not fair how she was treated and that women are treated differently from men in the office. Um, and instead of doing her work for the rest of the day, she wrote the first chapter of Lessons in Chemistry. And this was her debut novel. Uh, it got extremely popular. She sold like six million copies, I think. Um, they were translated to all the languages and it just came out as a as an amazing book. So it's going to tell us a story about a woman in the 20th century who um, was working as a chemist, but she gets fired, she's disrespected, and she's getting unfairly hire, uh, fired. And a couple years later, a couple years after she gets fired, she becomes a host of a very famous cooking show. So she's invited, she accepts, she's becoming a host. And she, uh, through this channel that she now has, through TV, she decides to empower um, her viewers uh, to do things that they thought they are not able to do. Um, I think it's going to be quite a feminist read uh, in a good way, in the sense that it will be like empowering women, showing them what they're worth. Um, especially if the setting is like 20th century when women worked less than they do now. Um, I don't know, I don't want to say anything um, that would not be true about the book, but it's it's a very interesting idea. I really want to read it. I really want to see how it turns out. Um, it's apparently just this very independent character who knows what she wants, who does things that nobody else does, and I really like the concept. And the next book and the last book of this video is called The Barbizon and it actually kind of gives the vibes of the lessons in chemistry a little bit, even though it is a non-fiction book. So it tells about the Barbizon, a hotel that was open only for women. Men couldn't go further than the lobby, so only women were allowed to live in the hotel. And it was not for any woman. Uh, it was mostly for artistic women who worked in artistic professions. So the hotel had art rooms, it had uh, rehearsal rooms uh, that were soundproof. And uh, before the Great Depression, it was this huge, huge thing. It was very, very popular among women, among um, women who were working. And after Great Depression, clientele changed a little bit, but it was still for those young women who wanted to do more, who wanted to become somebody. Um, and it was like a symbol of this independent uh, artistic woman. And women like Sylvia Plath and Grace Kelly and John Didion stayed there. And this hotel is just full of these interesting stories about amazing women um, who stayed there and who left a huge, huge um, like print in history. And I really want to see how the book is written. I wonder if we're going to see the stories of all of these women or it's just going to be in general about the hotel and how it was built and how uh, it was operated or maybe both. Um, I just really want to know what it is. Uh, I have I have never seen the hotel just for women before. I want to know how it's different from a hotel that's for everybody. I want to know if like only those artistic women stayed there or anyone could stay there, but it was mostly for artistic women. So there's a lot of questions that I really, really want to ask. And I've heard amazing reviews about the book. I'm very, very interested and excited about it. I'm hoping to read this one, uh, especially this year. But we'll see how it goes. I'm going much slower with my reading plans than I was supposed to, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but these were the books that I found very interesting and that I really, really want to read. Please let me know if you read any of these books and if they're actually good. Um, because a lot of times the idea is great, but it just is not done properly. Um, so yeah, please let me know if you know any of these books and if you enjoyed them and uh, please let me know about any books that you recently found that you're extremely interested in and want to read. And thank you for being here with me. Like this video if you enjoyed it and support my channel by subscribing and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.